Hello, YouTube fans and friends, and welcome back to the House Ivory. I am your humble and gracious host, Bank 60s. Let's jump back into the world of Crusader Kings 3. A reminder, if you like this content, I'd love it if you smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel, Alternate History Gaming, and of course hit that notification bell to find out when I drop the next video for you. All right. Before we got going here, there were a couple few other things that I was interested to just review. And this is kind of like as much for me and then sharing it out for you viewers who are interested in exploring more of the world, uh, you know, as it is for me just trying to get caught back up on how it is that things are. So in the last episode, which I highly recommend you check out, we reviewed the bigger picture, the grand strategic goals for the next 50 to 70 years, I would say. In this video, I wanted to just go back through a little bit of uh, more local flair and get into some of the internal politics of Ireland, Scotland, and some of the other things that will cause challenges as we look ahead. All right, so you look inside the realm, you can see what we possess all has a little flag with a city name under it. And we own most of the isles out here, as well as a very important county with many holding slots that are empty still here in Inverness in northern Scotland, what we know as northern Scotland. Now, I have a number of vassals, and those include the Jarl of Ulster here in Northern Ireland, Jarl Gudmunder and Asatru Norse with a fairly high opinion of me and you can see some of his other stats there prowess 22 he's one of our champions no doubt a good Jarl in Northern Ireland as we continue to try to spread and that's a project that will be ongoing as well domestically which we'll get into more of later in this video the spread of culture and religion across the kingdom here we have Jarl Hjordur Asbjörnsson of Galway, a 23-year-old, looks to be ill at the moment or something. Oh, has consumption. Next is Chieftain Hrodolfu, <laughs> Chieftain Hrodolfu. Fur, I don't know. Down here in Dyfleen, just a kid. And having a vassal who is just a kid is definitely a, a good thing. Alright, so then you have my character's son here in Scotland with a number of vassals, eight, none of whom appear particularly fond, at least not yet. You can review each to see how strong they are. Thorin, she is strong for sure. Each one is actually pretty, 
pretty strong on their own. Next. That's a weak one. That's a weak one. Another weak one. Small. So you can see the entire realm here, I would say, probably will be relatively stable internally uh, as we kind of review the minor lords across the realm. Those will change around a little bit after we do the succession from Barid to Valdemar. I expect, anyway. Here... Uh, we had gone over a couple of these. I figured I'd cover the rest. Uh, my other vassals, one of which is here. This is a loyal vassal in Germany. You all, it's this vassal who is warring with me who we will probably have to replace although eh, I don't know I might like this kid an Asatru Saxon hmm and then there's this ally vassal Count Toki that we had showed earlier. Strong. Beautiful, as it turns out, if you take off the helmet. Prowess of 28. Beautiful. Martial skill of 17. So we're, we're set up pretty... And then we have our army here. Our commander is... A reaver, flexible leader, and a military engineer. This being Bronmach Ragnell, a uh, unmarried Asatru Gaelic man that we picked up up there in the Northern Isles of Scotland. A prowess of 20. Military value of 17, solid. Brilliant strategist, hunter. And you saw the other leadership perks. Brian Mac Ragnail, he'll uh, he'll probably Brand Mac will be his name. Brand Mac, General Brand Mac, Captain Brand Mac, Champion Brand Mac. Uh, he'll be the one who wins us the war here. Probably will become an important general for us as we wage war in Germany moving forward. Now, let's take a look at the council. Okay, so here's our council. And uh, the, the main thing right now, really, uh, the most important thing I would say is that everybody likes us and that everybody's loyal. Uh, and really, frankly, that everybody is uh, a Satru. And it looks like everybody uh, meets all of that criteria and they're all pretty damn good at their jobs. There, I've looked and a couple could be replaced, but their replacements would not be loyal, most likely anyway. Um, and so we will uh, continue on with this council makeup. I have a number of prisoners. I'll be deciding what to do with them. As you can see, I could ransom all of them, which is likely to be our course of action. Some of them we've held for less than... These are all people that had been captured when we took over a lot of the territory we now have in Germany as we raided and pillaged. The evolution of cultures across 
northern Europe in the world. And you can see already, remembering what I've shown thus far, that where we rule, it is mostly all foreigners that we rule over. It's been that way. It's kind of the attitude that we have taken thus far. We haven't worked too hard to spread the culture as long as everybody behaves themselves and doesn't make us send out our Viking house carls and such to put them down, so to speak. Then we all can get along. There may be an opportunity here to create a divergent culture that can include all of what we lord over here as kind of a gesture of good faith to prevent popular uprisings here at home. That's one thing that you don't want to have to deal with. They kind of creep up on you from time to time. And in any case, one of the things that we're going to want to set about doing is trying to reestablish the Asatru faith all across our realm. Here you see in Germany all the areas that we took over in Saxony. And then you have some Franconians that we would be lording over as well here. More Saxons though, right? Kind of similar to your Anglo-Saxons. Another look at the big picture. I wanted to just do one last discussion here. Uh, before we pushed play on the simulation as to what it is I'm considering to be the longer term strategy now kind of like taking in some of this more recent information that we've covered about the politics and of course from the prior video about what threats face us in the world at large. That will center almost entirely around the Catholics and their response to my invasion here as well as whatever it is I choose to do about them which brings me to the next phase of our little strategic discussion here and that is to recall what I'd said in the prior video was generally speaking that I might presume to go with a mostly defensive strategy in the years ahead while angling at some way to take territory I need here in Scandinavia. I could very likely at some point launch a holy war and go ahead and do that and play defense down here in Europe on the continent. I believe one other thing I could also do is launch a preemptive onslaught on Central Europe and literally just come storming out of Northern Germany from where I've landed raiding and pillaging all across this entire Central European region however best I could manage that and in the meantime working a diplomatic angle with these friendly cultures let's say in Scandinavia so as to avoid an all-out war with them and perhaps allow for the bridges and the bonds of friendship to exist between uh, our two regions let's say at least uh, extending into the future and maybe 
allowing for there to be like a Scandinavian hegemony over this northern strip of Europe from Scandinavia across to Scotland and Ireland. That could be asking a lot of an adversarial AI, but it is an interesting prospect, I will say. Another option would be to launch the same kind of effort I discussed just a moment ago, but to do it in England and to just go ahead and take the rest of the island. And by virtue of conquering land, protect ourselves that much more against and ensure ourselves against what would be an oncoming invasion from the Catholics on our island, perhaps, if we own it all, we could be insulated, let's say, as a little Asatru Norse island going forward, maybe. Maybe the Catholics return the favor of us raiding and pillaging by coming and wholly warring us into submission in the next couple of few centuries. But that's one option as well, to storm south through the rest of England and just take this whole group of islands for our family, set our roots here, set our flag here, set our faith here, set all of our community here and maybe play a little with whatever it is that we have in Germany with the understanding that we'll be willing to lose it. Maybe we allow for some of the lords down there that we appoint to county chief ducal titles to kind of scrap it out down there for control. That could be another option. There's also the option, of course, to just go ahead and at the first opportunity figure out a way to launch a war against Sweden, to take what we need to reform the faith, and to go ahead and just do it. Here's the thing about that. something I approach now that I think about it more is a reformation of the faith would it even really be useful if we don't have an Asatru on the throne in Sweden or in Norway and it's just us and then there's Catholics everywhere else literally everywhere else what good is it going to be to try to take it. Then, there is one last approach that we could probably pull off, and that is kind of a combination of the onslaughts. We use mercenary troops and our own troops and we launch onslaughts on both southern England and central Europe the idea here would be to take land the idea here would be to burn it up and then at the same time we work the diplomatic angle to hurt and cause more division in Francia and then shore up relations in Scandinavia. Even though they stay Catholic, we can live with it. And then at some point, maybe try to barter trade, figure out a way to get what we want out of them up here. Hold on to what we got here with our aggressive action. I think I'm falling in love with that idea. Man, I cannot wait. I think I think that's what we're going to go with. And then hell or high water, man. 
Maybe the next hundred years is all we get. But I think that's what we'll try. An aggressive approach. Why not? It'll be the most fun anyway, right? And we're a warlike people. We wouldn't be doing ourselves honor. We wouldn't be going the way that we go through the world if we didn't do this. So let's do it. Now, I think that's going to be a wrap for this video. Again, just another review. More for myself, maybe, than for you, the viewer. Uh, but I certainly hope that you enjoyed this deeper dive into the world of the House Ivory. Uh, I hope to see you on the next episode. If you did enjoy this content, please hit that thumbs up button for me. Subscribe to my channel. That'd be great. And hit the notification bell to find out when I drop the next video for you. I'm Bank60s. See you next time.